Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the First Baptist Church of Bullhead City, Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. Are you happy to be here? Yes. Okay. Is it bothering you too much to wear one of these? Yes. 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 That's not what you're. Okay. Anyway, I understand that because uh, I look better in a mask, but it isn't comfortable. Okay. And today's Father's Day, June the 21st. Happy Father's Day to all you folks who have children. And uh, we've got a few songs today that refer to Father's Day and Father's, because we all have a father up there, right? Amen. So uh, we are going to open with a word of prayer, if you wouldn't mind standing up for us uh, to honor that father. Oh, Heavenly Father, you are awesome. We thank you so much for the things that you do provide for us, for for all the food, the clothing, the shelter, our transportation, and this building that we can come worship in. We thank you for those who have come before us and have given so much so that we can come here and celebrate you and worship you, because you are worthy, and we give you the praise and the glory. We ask you to send the Holy Spirit to be among us today, and uh, let the words that are heard be your words. Father, we thank you in all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So we have come into his presence. It kind of sounds like this.
So we think because of the situation as it stands right now, we're not going to increase the number of uh, opportunities here, you know, for people to gather. We're going to keep doing church. You know, no one shut down churches anymore or anything like that. We're going to keep doing churches. We're going to try to stay distant. We're going to, we've got hand sanitizer back here, but we just are encouraging you all to be careful. Uh, it says that there are 284 in Kingman with 41 deaths there and 286 in Bullhead City, including 18 deaths. Jeez. So, uh, wow. you know, that's a lot. That's a lot. I mean, that it's been is. six weeks ago, there were only 20 people in that's the Bullhead that. area. Now there's 286. Whoa. And, you know, ever since uh, Memorial Day, the numbers have shot way up. So we do have to be careful. It's not over yet. It's going to be with us for a while. But we can get through this. Amen? Amen. With the Lord's help, we will get through this. Uh, so that's, uh, that's the latest from the Mojave County Department of Health. So, you know, we're just going to kind of ride this out. I mean, what else can we do? But we're going to continue to be here. And we hope you continue to come. Uh, it's important to worship the Lord. It may be a little inconvenient because of the mask, but it's important to gather together and continue worshiping. Is that right? Amen. Amen. So uh, we do have some photographs that came in this week from the Philippines. Now, uh, we had some boxes that landed there two or three weeks ago, and sometimes, you know, they unpack and they, they take us uh, take pictures of some stuff in the boxes that, that they uh, really enjoy. And here's one of the pictures now. Those are scarves that were sent up here. Some of you may recognize some of them that have been sent out of this church. And uh, we send clothing and we send uh, uh, bedding and things like that. Those are scarves. In the next picture, we've got, oh yes, <laughs> pasta sauce. You know, uh, we're so used to Italian food and, and, and you're going down to Vito's and having pizza or, or whatever. They love uh, spaghetti up there. And there's, there's peanut butter too at the top of the picture. So if we send them uh, some dry spaghetti, and I, I noticed we had got some more this morning, and we send them some spaghetti and some cans of sauce, and we can't send bottles because they'll break in shipment, but if we send cans of sauce, they are so happy to get that stuff, and we're happy to provide it. Uh, one more picture came through this week, and that is a flashlight. That's an LED flashlight uh, sitting on top of some uh, sheets. So we've sent bedding up there to them. That's actually the edge of the box that is visible on the right-hand side of it. So uh, flashlights are very important. A lot of those folks do not have running water and electricity. So if we can provide something that will give them light in the middle of the night, that's a real plus. So we encourage uh, batteries, usually double A's are real good. And some of these small flashlights that we see around, Harbor Freight gives them away practically. And uh, those are real handy for those folks. So anyway, that's uh, the latest that we've gotten out of the Philippines. That's Pastor Lanny's box, I believe, is that right? Pastor, yeah, Pastor Lanny and Pastor Gloria. Yeah, and uh, yeah, anyway. So uh, that's uh, some more progress that's, uh, you know, that we're making on the Philippine front there. So uh, let's go back to singing some songs here. Once again, it's Father's Day, so this song's called Father, I Adore You.
Judah. This is my father's world. And we are the heirs to that world. The Bible says we are heirs along with Jesus. Can't get any better than that, huh? Amen. Well, the Lord should be what we have in our minds and in our hearts as we go through the day. And there's one here called Be Thou My Vision, an old Irish tune. It's a beautiful tune here. It goes like that. <laughs>
compare this week's word. Guys. I got news for you. No one hates those masks anymore than I do. Oh, man. But, but we wear them, right? Because we love each other and we care about each other. But can't wear one when I do this. So sorry, but everybody's at least six feet away, right? Yeah. Nobody hates those things anymore than I do. I'm going to go and turn the air conditioner on. Stop until you see the 60s. Yeah. Good to see everybody here this morning. Amen. It really is. It's all these smiling faces. And have you noticed that it's Father's Day, but all the ladies are the ones that have the color coordinated masks? Oh. <laughs> I mean, you look, you got pink and pink, you got brown and brown. I mean, oh, yeah, they, they got it going on, guys. Yeah. They're either telling you to pick up your game <laughs> or they're telling you to buy your own mask. So, you know. I don't know which one it is. It is Father's Day. And we want to thank all the fathers for everything that they do for their children. The fathers that stay in their children's lives and help to guide them and raise them up as the Bible tells us a child should be raised. We want to thank the fathers for the sacrifices they make. The mothers make them too. We recognize mothers just you know, a little while back. But the fathers do these sacrifices, and men tend to be less emotional or less visibly emotional. Um, and believe me, there's still a storm going on there. You ladies know that, but they just don't show it as much. Um, as for me, I never really had one biological father. I only had one biological one, I guess, but didn't have the one human. I mean, he wasn't around. So. But there were so many people in my life. Most of them were Marines. When I get asked why you go to the Marine Corps, because most of the guys that, that, that helped to form me as a child were Marines. There was one Army fellow, and I got the sad news yesterday that we had lost him. He's, he's, you know, he's 67 years old, and he had uh, some issues with cancer, and, and he's gone. He's in Virginia. Uh, his name was David Erland Dano. And the funny thing was, when I was a young police officer, Rents were high, salaries were low. You guys wouldn't believe how low. And so he went through a, a bad divorce and we, we bought a house together. We actually bought one together. So he was such a guiding influence in my life that I feel like, especially being Father's Day, I'd be amiss if I didn't recognize him and ask you all to pray for the Dana family and all his relatives and you know just everyone because it, he was just a great, great person. The funny thing was, is that his initials are D-A-D. So when he first introduced me to people or whatever, he said, hey, that's my boy, and I said, that's my dad. Mm -hmm. now, now why he wanted to take ownership of something like that, I don't know, but he did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he volunteered that. So today we talk about fathers, and we talk about Father's Day, but we talk about our perfect Father's Day. A lot of times whatever you, uh, people will say, well, you know, what do you mean a perfect Father's Day? You can look at this two ways. You can say the day was perfect or the father was perfect. Our father in heaven is perfect. Amen. All the time. Amen. He always watches over us. He blesses us with people in our life. I myself wasn't blessed with someone who was always there. I was blessed with a multitude of them. See, guys, I, thought, I think I got over on you guys that had just one. One mother and one father. And I'm still gaining those mothers, Bob. I don't know where they're coming from. But I am. I mean, you know. And they don't hesitate to set me straight either, which is a good thing because I need that. But when we talk about fathers, one of the first things we, we think about when we look at the Bible is Exodus 20, 12. Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Honor. We must honor 
our earthly parents, but we must honor God, not just with our words, but with our actions. We must continue living for God as he is our father, a father that we want to be reunited with in heaven. Amen? Amen. We want to go home to heaven to be with him. This is a journey, and at times this is a tough journey. I have found myself recently, and I've discussed this with Bob and Wayne, uh, it seems like my phone brings a whole lot more now with, with counseling and with problems and with people having issues, and always you, you, everyone's got a different perspective on things, and it's kind of hard sometimes for whatever for me to back away from my perspective and see everyone's, but I do my best, and I go to the Lord in prayer, and it helps me. The thing about it is, is that everyone's going to think at some point in their life or whatever, they got short change. They're going to feel like, I didn't get the good end of that deal. But ultimately, we get the best deal, guys. Amen. We get the best deal because we've got God. Yes. Don't worry about the things that happen on the face of this earth because you can't change them. I see people going around now, whatever, and regardless of what side of the argument you're on, they're tearing down statues and doing this and doing that. What's that accomplishing? You're not going to change the past. No. You know? You're not going to change the past. And those who forget the past are destined to repeat it. And yet people don't remember that. You know, it's all about, oh, I need to tear this down. They tore a statue down in Richmond, Virginia the other night uh, at Virginia Commonwealth University, and it fell on three of them. And now they're suing the, the, the city. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. You know, if the judge in that case whatever takes one look at it, you should say frivolous loss to boom. And by the way, we're going to charge you with criminal mischief because now you've admitted that you were there tearing it down. That's what should happen. Well, it probably won't. It probably won't. You know? That's not honoring God. That's not honoring your fellow man. That's going out there, frankly, Lord, and acting like an idiot. I mean, I don't know any other way of putting it. And I, I can't soft serve some things or whatever. I'm sorry. It, it comes out sometimes, and, you know, it may come out or whatever. And if it's ever hurtful to anyone in the audience, I do not mean to hurt you. Okay? But it's just the way I am. I'm just a hard headed, dumb marine sometimes, and that's the way it's going to come out. But everything, the motivation for everything I say is going to come from this book in God's Word. Amen? Amen. It's got to come from there. Truth is truth. Love is love. Hope is hope. And it's all grounded in our Father. And we have to honor our Father in heaven through our actions. Not just talk about it, do it. It's hard, some people say. You know what? The thought of being in hell is a whole lot harder on me than the thought of doing what I'm supposed to do here. Amen. Haven't always been that way. I've needed people in my life to help direct me. I've needed people in my life that sometimes would have just kicked me in the seat of the pants and said, hey, wake up. You know? And I think, quite frankly, that's what some of this world needs right now. Needs a swift kick in the pants. Wake up. You know? This isn't all about you. You <laughs> hurt my feelings. Yeah, and? Are you alive? Are you good? Did God wake you up this morning? Yeah. Did he? Yeah. Yes. Come on, guys. I have more people in here that. Did God yeah. wake you up this morning? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. He wakes us ever, up every morning. And for that and that alone, he deserves honor and praise and glory. Amen? Amen. For that and that alone. Not to mention all the other wonderful things he does in our life all the time. So honor your father and your mother. Yes, honor your earthly parents. But realize the deeper meaning of the scripture in that, look at this, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. I want you to look at this. Ephesians 6, 2 and 3, honor your mother and father, which is the first commandment with a promise. Here's the key to this. First commandment with a promise. So that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. That's a promise. If you will do what you are supposed to do, you will, you will have a long life on earth. But what goes beyond this is you will have eternity in heaven with a father. Amen? Amen? Think about that. Think about that promise. God keeps his promises, folks. He's not like, not like politicians. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Politician kept a promise the other day. Write it down. Mm -hmm. you know? That's something in the annals of history. Yeah. It will seldom be repeated. And I don't care which side of the political picture you're on. I really don't. You know? A politician actually kept a promise. We're in the desert, but it's going to rain today. <laughs> it, it might rain 40 days and 40 nights. I mean, you know, they kept a promise. Folks, the things on this earth 
that we can't control, that are beyond our control, we can't attempt to control. We can't. And we can't do it by going out and tearing down statues. We can't do it by protesting against something. If something is, is legal and wrong, and I said before and I'll say it again, even as a retired law enforcement officer, I stand behind the people protesting this rightfully. Not tearing down stuff, not burning down buildings, not hurting people. But if you want to protest it rightfully, then so be it. And that should be handled according to our criminal justice system. Amen? Amen. That's the way we've always handled it. And yet, it isn't good enough. You want to show me something better? All these people jumping up and down, tearing all this stuff down or whatever. I'll tell you what, you want to go to another country, I've been to 124 of them other than the United States. And I'm going to tell you, you'll never find a better one than where you're standing right now. That's right. We've got our problems. We have our problems. But you'll never find a better one than where you're standing. Right. I'm going to tell you. And yet, and I'm going to tell you something. If they were doing this in China, <laughs> doing this in Italy, oh yeah. Years ago, I... Uh, when I was in law enforcement, I, we were approached by a federal munitions company. And federal munitions had developed a new weapon for rioters. And they'd already tried it in Italy. It was a, you shot in a 37 millimeter gas gun. It was a six and a half inch long shell that was over an inch in diameter. About an inch and a half. And it was loaded with nothing but double up buckshot. And you didn't shoot it into the crowd. You shot it on the sidewalk. And it skipped up, so it caught them from about the knees down. And they would tell them about a half dozen times, get off the street. You know, because they were burning, they weren't just peaceably assembling. No. They were burning and rioting and stuff. And then they just walk out and do it. It was like a lawnmower. You know, now recently in Richmond, Virginia, the chief of police there used tear gas. They were pulling down statues and he used tear gas. The mayor just asked for his resignation. That's the difference, folks. If they were in Italy, you would be asking the mayor to, you would be asking the chief of police to resign. You'd probably be giving them a pay raise, but you'd have a whole lot of people walking in front of you after that, I'm telling you. They don't play these games that we play. And yet, people want to say, well, we can make it better. No, you're not making it better, though, are you? No. Are you making it better? Are you emulating what God and Jesus would do? No. Do you think Jesus would tear down a statue? No. And he could with just a twitch of his finger. You know? It's the past. God tells us to move past the past and move on. Live for tomorrow. Because ultimately, if you are a Christian and you're living for him, you're living for tomorrow. Because that's the tomorrow we want. Amen? Amen. Right here, right there. God with him, with my Father in heaven forever. And I can't think of a better gift no matter what day it is. If it's Father's Day, if it's Mother's Day, if it's Christmas, there's no better gift ever been given to us than when he sent his son to die on that cross right there. Purity, the gift of Calvary, salvation that comes to you, not because you deserve it, not because you're righteous, because we're not, by God's grace and God's love alone. Amen? Amen. That's what it counts. And yet, you see people every day and they just can't see that. Matthew 6, 9, this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our Father in heaven. He is ultimately the father of all of us because he created us. Amen? Amen? He created us, and he created us perfectly. Perfectly. We're perfect the way we are, and we're all different. We are all different. We have different perspectives. But if we're truly going to emulate God, we have to respect each other's perspectives. I am not going to see something the way, same way Bob is. I'm not going to see it the same way I'm going to see it as Miss Joanne's going to see it. Miss Joanne's going to see all the beautiful things, and plus she's an artist. She's going to see things that way. Yeah. Bob's going to see things either musically or Bob's going to get real analytical. As a former buyer for, for, for cities, Bob's going to get real analytical on you. I'm telling you. you know? Bob's going to wonder whatever holds up the sheet or whatever. And this thing on this side, this thing on this side. You know? Which way are you going to go? Well, you know, it makes the answer obvious. Me, I'm going to look at it and say, okay, well, this is good and this is good. But I'm going to look at it from my perspective. We all look at things from our perspective. That's probably the hardest part of a relationship for those of you married out there. You know, I'm sure you look at your mate sometimes and say, how in the world can you think that way? Well, I see it this way. I see it that way. Then it's called a marriage or whatever when you begin to see things alike and together. Probably a little scary too, isn't it? Yeah. You know when we're really getting scared? Bob and I have started to see things alike. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, you know. 
see another person's perspective. If the Father in heaven's name is really hallowed, if you really believe that, then you respect each other. You love each other. What's Father's Day about? We're recognizing our fathers for the gifts that they're giving us. Who gave us more than the Father in heaven? No one. The Father in heaven gave us his Son on the cross. Amen? Amen. Not because we deserved it. Not because it was a debt that he owed us. No. Because of the debts we owed him. And we continue to owe him every day. And yet, he loves us and he understands us and he puts up with us. So thank you, Father. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be that name. Every time you open a prayer, open a prayer. You don't need to necessarily open it like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be that name. Some people do. But when you open a prayer or whatever, Father God in heaven, thank you. Thank you for all the wonderful things in my life. Thank you for the fact that I woke up this morning to see the sun. Even though someone mentioned earlier it's going to be 114 degrees. Thank you, Lord, for the air conditioning, too. I mean, you know. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Thank him for the things that he's put in your life because he put them there. Amen? Amen. He put them there. Nobody else did. Sometimes, and we'll look at things. Sometimes we'll get, we'll have an altercation or we'll have something will happen. And we'll be like, what in the world did that happen? You know? We don't know and sometimes we never figure it out. But you know what? It's part of his plan. He did it that way for a reason. You're going to learn from it. And if you learn from it, you're blessed by it. And ultimately, it's going to grow you in faith if you seek to be spiritually mature. Amen? Amen. And as you grow in that spiritual maturity, remember, every time you take a step up that ladder, then you need to grow out. You need to spread it. If you grow vertically, then you need to spread it horizontally. Okay? You need to tell everyone how happy you are. And I'll tell the world that I'm a Christian. I'm happy that I'm a Christian. You know, can I help you? Can I do this? You know, instead of, well, I don't like you looked at me that way. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'd, rather, I'd rather say, I'm amazed and surprised you looked at me at all. If it didn't hurt your eyes, do it again. <laughs> you know? This is how you should pray. You pray because you're recognizing the gift that the Father in heaven gave you. You pray because his name is hallowed. Yes, but if you say it with your mouth and don't do it with your actions, guess what? It's not hollow, it's hollow. Okay? It's hollow. It doesn't mean anything. The intention has to be there. Someone said the other day, I was having a discussion here, and she's probably going to look up at me when I say this, so I'm not going to look in her direction. Someone said, God knows what's in your heart. It may be cruel. It may sound cruel, but God knows what's in your heart. Someone dropped off a, a, a note to me this morning here at the church. And uh, said that they couldn't be in church today. They have a lot of personal problems and things going on. And absolutely. And now we're able to get a lot of things done. They had to get them done today. Said, no problem. They said, but, but in that note where that person said, you know, I know a lot of people are giving excuses. And a lot of people saying they can't come. I'm not going to bother to do that, Pastor. I loved it. I loved it. Because he's not. Because the first person he's making those excuses to him when he makes them is to himself. Self-justification. You know? I'm doing this because of this. It's no different than whatever. If I mentioned this before, I'm going to say it again. Stand at that door and keep people from coming into church. You can say whatever you want to say. I'm doing it because of this. I'm standing up against the government conspiracy. I'm doing this or I'm doing this. No, you're not. You're being manipulated by Satan to do what he wants you to do. And because you can't admit. And once again, I, was, I, was, I did it again this morning. Remember this best, best, best? I was W-R-O-N-G. I was wrong again this morning. We were doing something. I was wrong again. Nothing new. I think it was this wonderful uh, presentation, how she puts the scriptures up. I had written on her sheet one thing, written on my sheet another. So I looked it up in the Bible or whatever, and she was right. I was wrong. I was wrong, God. W-R-O-N-G. Okay? But we can't admit that. We can't. I'm doing it because of this. I'm doing it because of this. Tell you what. You go tell God that. Go tell God you did it for that reason. Gonna we'll be walking in front of that pier again, guys. Be hanging that head low. <laughs> you know? But it's okay because he loves you. He's a forgiving father in heaven. And he loves you. But one of the keys is repentance. You gotta say, you gotta say it, guys. I know it hurts. We're gonna say it together now. I was wrong. Come on, didn't that feel good one more time? I was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it feels kind of good. Get off your chest. Because you know sometimes 
past week, you've been wrong and haven't admitted it. I know I have. Amen. You know? I was wrong and didn't admit it. Something I thought, you know, something I did driving. <laughs> something I did when I parked across two lanes or when I ran in that store wide open and, you know, wasn't paying attention. Something I did the way I looked at that person, stinky eye. Oh yeah, we know we did it. So it felt good to admit it, didn't it? Our Father in Heaven forgives us, but we have to admit it. Our Father in Heaven, His name is hallowed, and He is special because He forgives us everything. Amen? Amen. Every single thing. Yeah. Hebrews 13, 5 says, Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Because God has said, Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. I spoke about earlier when we started that I didn't have a, a human father. You know, I had one biologically, but he never wanted to be in that, in that situation. At 23, I actually found this man and called him and said, hey, I'd like to come meet you. I don't want anything. I just, I'd like to come meet you. And he said, I have another life. You know, don't, don't, don't bother me and my family. I said, God bless you. I'm up the phone. Wow. You know? Okay. As far as I'm concerned, his loss. That's right. Amen. Yeah, I mean, you know, I can't imagine myself, I can't imagine having a child on the face of this earth and not looking for him forever. And you see these stories where his children are abducted. That's part of what, that's part of what motivated me to go to Asia and work with those organizations there to recover those children. I couldn't imagine, I have never been blessed with fatherhood, but I could not imagine having a father, having a child somewhere on the face of this earth and not being able to find them. I couldn't imagine that. That would just have torn my heart out. And when you think about that, think about all those kids out there and whatever that, that uh, you have, you, you'll see in, uh, in Asia, you'll see a bunch of Amerasian children. A lot of them were real grown up now because a lot of them are Vietnam era children. We know how they got there. We know how they got there. And they were abandoned by their fathers. But you know what? The Father in heaven said, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. Amen? Amen. So he's always there. And he will put people in your life. And he will put you in situations to grow you so that you can go forth to spread the gospel and the good news. Amen? Amen? Always. Always. It's a wonderful thing what God does for us every day in addition to waking us up. The great thing he does when he wakes us up but then it's all the wonderful things he's got for us during the day. Even those bad experiences are good because inevitably we're going to learn from them. Amen? Amen. If we learn from them and we grow in spiritual maturity then we know we're good. We know we're good. Romans 8, 15, and 17. The spirit you receive does not make you slaves, so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption of sonship. Adoption. We're adopted by God, essentially. He created us, but then he adopted every single one of us. We wouldn't listen. We're hard-headed. Yes, even you, Bob. Bye. We're hard-headed. We're temperamental. We're moody. Someone told me in a text the other day what a, what a good person that I was. And I think I responded something to, to the tune of the word. I'm hard-headed. I'm, I'm, you know, hard to get along with. And I'm, I know I can be a pain in the butt, but, you know, God loves me anyway and I do my best. And this person being a person they know responded very kindly to me where it told me I was a good little brother. She certainly did. So I was glad to hear that. And I don't have any siblings, so. But it was nice. But God forgives us like that all the time. All the time. 17 goes on to say, now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God. You just spoke about that. Heirs of God. And just so you guys know, we do not communicate as far as what the music's going to be. I never know what it's going to be. And yet over and over, I keep seeing this. And all that does is reaffirm to me, that's God's hand on this church. Amen. 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 That's God's hand. Amen. Now, if we are children, we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. Share in the sufferings, the things that we come across in this life, the trials and the tribulations, the questioning ourselves, the wondering, why should I go on? Because I hear that occasionally. You know? Those are all things 
that we suffer through, but it's nothing compared to what he suffered through on the cross, is it? No, nothing at all. But still, even though our sufferings are minor compared with his, equal glory? Not equal, but we are heirs, co-heirs with Christ. Can you imagine that? Imagine, some, imagine somebody in Don Laughlin's family. Well, I'm a partial heir to the Laughlin fortune. Okay. And that's all going to be gone when you die or whatever, but I'm the heir to heaven. God told me so. I know it's true. And uh, good luck with all that money. And I'm not saying he's not a Christian man. He may well be. But I'm telling you that the things of this earth, be they money, jewels, cars, boats, anything else you can, you know, planes, anything else you can gather here on the earth, mean nothing compared with our inheritance in heaven. Amen? Right. Amen. We will inherit that. That's such a wonderful feeling. You talk about being happy for God and saying, you know, happy Father's Day, Lord. I want to say it over and over and over. I want to say it every single day. Every day is yeah. Happy Father's Day, God. You are my Father in heaven. You watch over me when no one else has. You say you will never leave me and you never have. And despite my inept efforts, despite all the things that I do wrong, you're still there for me. Name one other relationship in your life that's been like that. Someone who's always been there, will always be there. We hope we find someone else like that. But frequently or whatever, there'll be something or whatever where someone will say, oh, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> it happens. You know it happens. And when that happens, you say, well, you know, I thought you were with me because you met me forever. No one keeps his word. No, God keeps his word. God's going to be there forever. And if you have that person in your life, guess what? Guess who brought that about? God. That's also a gift from God. Think about that. That's also a gift from God. So whatever you need, he has provided. And all he asks is that you love your brother. And show that love through your actions, not just your words. And show your love for him. You show your love for God by thanking him, by emulating him, by doing the things in this life that help others learn from you. Folks, we're all teachers. We're all teachers. We're all teachers. We're all evangelists. All children of God, we need to spread his word and his light and tell people about his gift. Amen? Amen. We need to tell them about that gift. Because we all need it, folks. A lot of us think we don't, but we do. And a lot of them out there, well, they know they don't. I love it when someone looks at me and says, I know I don't need God. Well, what do you practice? I'm an agnostic. For you to realize what agnostic means, I just start laughing. What do you mean? Agnostic is derived from the Greek word or whatever that means ignorant of the truth. So, 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 you're telling me you're agnostic, but you know you don't know God. But you don't really know because by definition, if you're an agnostic, you're seeking knowledge because you don't know. Wow. Um, come on, brother, let's talk a little. You're a little confused. <laughs> Oh, they don't like that one, but, you know, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care if they don't like it. The only thing I care about, the only thing I want to hear, let's do this together, guys. Tell me more. Amen. Amen. Tell me more. That's what I want to hear. And then when I hear that, I'm happy to tell them more. I can talk almost as much as Bob can. No. <laughs> Not even close. Uh, Bob says I'm just an amateur when compared with him, so I mean, you know. I keep trying, though, guys. I keep trying, I promise. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. That's what God wants to give you, hope and a future. He wants to give you hope for a future, not of this earth and the things that fade away. I mean, now, if you, if you think you're rich and you got this and you got this, who knows? Riot might happen. Somebody could burn your store down. Insurance company refused to pay. But if you build up your mansions up there, they're waiting for you when you get there. Amen? Amen. That's the difference. 
The things of this world are perishable. Amen? Amen. Every single thing on this earth is perishable. It will, it will at some point be gone. But God is forever. He's my hope for a future. He should be your hope for a future. The plans that he has for you may not prosper you on this earth, but they will prosper you in that in the end you will win. Remember, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And when you get to the end of the race, when you finish the race with God, you win, folks. Amen. Amen. Period. Amen. A long time ago, I used to drive stock cars a long time ago. When I first got in stock cars, I was a bit wild, believe it or not. And I will never forget, Skipper Drew looked at me one time after I crashed the car and said, you know, in order to win the race, you got to finish the race. Light bulb came on. Like, wow, that's actually required. <laughs> you can't finish first if you don't finish. You know? So the light bulb came on. I was a little better right after that. But we forget that. We forget that. We get tired. We grow weary. We get sad. We get overcome by the things of the world. And when that happens, then we want to slack off. And we have a crisis of faith. And the crisis of faith, remember that in the crisis of faith, as your faith goes down, the results in your life go down. As your faith goes up, Positive results in your life goes up. Amen? Amen. How many times have you seen it in your life? Amen. I was talking with someone recently, and they said, this was a pastor, local pastor, by the way. And he said that for years and years, he, uh, he, just, he just fought the tithing because he and his wife just couldn't make it. They just couldn't see how they could give 10% and make it. And then he said, one day, he said, he looked at her and he said, for one month, we're going to try it. And she said, okay, we'll try it. First week, gave it, nothing happened. Things were really tight that week, he said. Second week, gave it, nothing happened. Third week, unexpectedly, here comes someone in or whatever and gives him like 500 bucks or whatever. He said, which carried my budget another two months. <laughs> and he said, after that, started diligently doing it. And then he started to feel the call on his life for Christ and became a pastor. But he said, I, I, he said, I just, I never, he said, I'll be honest, but I never would have believed it until I saw that. And now he's a pastor spreading God's word. Right here in the area. But I thought about that and I thought, you know, short sighted, you know, can't see the future, can't see what's out in front of you. You know, you can only see right here. You know, you'll look at people doing deals a lot of times and they'll say, I'll do this deal or whatever because I save this or I get this or I get this or I get this. But, but they don't see the long term effects. You know? They don't see the long term effects. It's like uh, we got some video equipment. And you look at you can get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and you know you know what good stuff ain't cheap and cheap stuff ain't good <laughs> period Amen. you know why well, buy it and then eight months later have to buy it again and then again and then again you know buy it one time and you're done you know and if somebody said that and he just glanced at me or whatever and i've heard him say that before whatever. i didn't steal it from you i've heard it before but you're right you know you are don't buy junk. Period. How does this tie into God's plan to prosper you? Well, you're buying into, emotionally and mentally, Satan's illusions when you do what he wants you to do. You buy into those things. You think, and you're convinced, I'm doing it. This, this is the right thing to do. I'm doing this for good. But God, if you will open your ears, and open my eyes has never been a problem. Open my ears, I'm telling you what. I, I think sometimes people need a drill. You know? <laughs> listen. Listen. Listen to your heart. When God talks to you and tells you to do something, there's a reason for it, folks. Amen? Amen. He's trying to get through to you. And why? Because he's our Father in heaven and he loves us. He'll sacrifice anything for you. All you've got to do is just listen. But we find it hard. We do. And we buy into that. We really do. We buy the junk. We buy into the junk rather than looking for the long-term stuff. But this may cost more. Well, I'll have to, I'm, you know, I can't go out and party. Talk about, talk about coronavirus and how it spreads in young people this morning. Uh, it came to my attention yesterday. Uh, the LSU Tigers, not Auburn, not Alabama, 
won the, won the National College Football Championship this year. LSU Tigers the other night, the football team decided they were going to go out and do some more hopping. Now over 30 of them have corona and, and are quarantined or whatever for the dangers of corona because so many of them came down with it. Yeah. They're invincible. They're 18 to 22, most of them, so they're invincible. But guess what? Now they have it. But they bought into that. They bought into, oh, we're the national champions. We do this. We do. They bought into that. You know? The devil sold them a bunch of goods, Bob. And he's good at that. And they bought into it. Don't buy into it, folks. Don't buy into it, whatever. That, you can't. You don't have enough love for your brother to protect him. You know, I'm going to have, I hate this mask. You know, I don't even know where I threw it. Probably dropped it on the floor. I hate it, but I'll wear it. If I think for one instant or whatever, that will keep you or you or you from getting something that I could possibly have spread, I'll wear it. Because I love you guys. Because God tells me to. We're family, okay? We are family. We're all members of the family of God. I was trying to say this morning, I was trying to explain something, and one of the people here at the church explained it to me or whatever because I couldn't get it. I said, yeah, I said, a uh, young girl called me this morning or whatever and, and wished me happy daddy's day because she didn't have a daddy. The girl that I've influenced, she's a good friend of mine from high school, her daughter. And uh, I said, thank you. I said, but and I said, now I got now I got one, I was appointed. She told me I was appointed. Sarah told me I was appointed a daddy. And I said, well, I'm appointed a daddy. And I said, and when I go to Africa or Asia or Italy or Spain, I got 500 you know, I'm an uncle to 500 kids. Yeah. They're all following me down the street you know, over and over. I said, I don't know how to got to be an uncle. And a wise person looked at me this morning and she said, you're the one who's always saying it's the family of God. And I was like, okay, I'll put on my dunce cap now. Obviously, I should have got that, you know? We are family, folks. Every single one of us. We are a family. We are members of the body of Christ. And we need to love each other and love our Father because God as a plan for us for the future. Amen? Amen. Hebrews 12. This is kind of long. She, she split it for me into two pages because it's so long. So let's go through this. Endure hardships as discipline. God is treating you as his child, for what children are not disciplined by their father. If you are not disciplined and everyone goes undisciplined, then you are not legitimate, not true sons and daughters at all. Moreover, we all had human fathers who disciplined us and respected us. We respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the Father of spirits and live? Discipline. How often do you see that anymore? No. Hardly ever. Hardly ever, frankly. I see, I, I, I've talked about people, you know, and how they say, well, you know, you're inhibiting his personality, and you do this, and you do this, and, you know, just let him run uncontrollably through the store and act like a little crazy person, you know? And it happens. Problem is, is that when he's, when he's 25, he's acting like a crazy person pulling down a statue and it falls on him, amen? Amen, amen. They just proved it in Richmond, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't know what better proof you need. We need discipline, folks. We need discipline. And the way the Father disciplines us is a little bit different. You know? He lets us get ourselves into a bear trap. We walk into it. We ask it, you know, we'll go, I got this one, God. You know? And we'll walk right into it. And then he'll say, here's my hand. Let me pull you out. That's how he does it. But people in this world refuse to discipline children anymore. They just won't do it. You're inhibiting his growth. Yeah. You know, I'm going to help raise him up about a half inch. <laughs> you know? I can't believe it when I see it. I, mean, I see it over and over. You know? And we should submit, submit even more to the Father of Spirits and live. Live how? Eternally, guys. Eternally. That's what God got in store for us. Hebrews 12, 10, 11 goes on to say, they discipline us for a little while as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good in order that we may share in his holiness. You go through trials and you learn and you wonder, how can God do this? I got news for you, folks. It's a wake-up call. Is Corona disciplining us? I don't know. It should be teaching us something. Some of us too hard-headed for it. Yeah? There's nothing that happens in this world that God does not allow to happen. 
Remember that. He allows it to happen. People say, well, when's your mother going to go away? In God's time. Amen? Amen. In God's time. This should be a wake-up call. It is for a lot of people. The Walmarts are selling more Bibles than they've ever sold. Every time you turn around, they say they're restocking Bibles. But if you're looking at the Word and not getting it, if you're not living in the Word, you're still not there, folks. And that's why we need to profess our faith. We need to spread the gospel. We need to reach out that helping hand. And we need to show people that God is the only way. Amen? Amen. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Now, in simple English, in the case of the guy in Virginia, you know, if he'd been disciplined some as a child, the statue probably wouldn't have followed him because he probably wouldn't have been there. Amen? Amen. Period. It's just that simple. I mean, I don't know how else to explain it. It's just that simple. If you live without discipline, then whatever happens is your fault. Huh? I can't believe they're going to sue the city because the city had a statue there that wasn't bothering anyone. But they pulled it down and had to sue the city for having the statue there. I just, I can't grasp that. That's just impossible for me to get in my head. I can't get a handle on that. You know, I, I'll try to look at everyone's perspective, folks, or whatever, but I think this perspective came about from one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Proverbs 19, 8, discipline your children, for in that there is hope. Do not be a willing party to their death. Amen. And that's all I should have to say. Yeah. Discipline them. You want to be a good father? Discipline them. Period. Tell them the truth. I don't want to hurt their feelings. I love you enough to tell you the truth. And in doing that, I hope I am emulating God because he loves us enough to always tell us the truth, even when it's unpleasant. Amen? Amen. Even when it's unpleasant. He loves us enough to tell us the truth. It may not be rosy and pretty, it may not be not what we want, but you know what? It's best for us. Because we're not talking about a death here on earth. We're talking about eternal damnation. Preachers won't preach that anymore, someone told me the other day. Today, yeah, so they, no, you can't do that. You scare people off. Yeah. Wow. Well, I am happy to say I see the same faces I'm used to seeing every Sunday in here or whatever. And thank you for coming back for truth. Because I tell you because I love you. Okay? And I tell you because if he has me stand up here and I say anything other than truth, then I have damned myself. This is holy ground, folks. This is holy ground right here. And the only thing that should come out is God's word and truth and love. Do it in love. Do it in understanding. You know, Bob tells me whatever. Push the marine out of the way and do it in a pastoral manner. You know, sometimes that's hard. You know, but inevitably, it has to be the truth. And it has to be done out of love. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That's how much our Father, our perfect Father, loves us. Make no mistake, he gave his only begotten Son, that you should have eternal life, that you should live forever. He loves you that much, guys, each and every one of us. What we need to do now is go out and tell people about him so that they're not lost. I said a few weeks ago, you're going to be surprised at some of the people you see in heaven, but you'll be more surprised at people you don't see. Well, I expected him to be there. He didn't make it. He didn't get the message. And then you go to think back and wonder, is there anything else I could have done? Don't put yourself in that situation. Don't put yourself there. Help that person. Help them to find God. Period. He'll get you through it. You say, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. He'll put it there. I believe me. If you take the Bibles in the back and you're handing them out, guess what? Even in social distancing, folks, I think I can throw one of these six feet. Let's see. Close enough. Take it up. See? See?
We can get on with people, okay? We can talk to God, even in these times, especially in these times, amen? amen. This is when we really need to do it. Amen. Don't worry about the words God will put them there. Don't worry about the emotions God will put them there. Don't worry about the understanding and the love and the knowledge God will put it there, amen? amen? He will put it there because he loves you, because he is our perfect father. Amen. Period. Amen. He is our perfect father. On the cross of Calvary, Jesus died, but it wasn't an ending. It was a beginning. You see here, this is actually a picture of a, uh, a cross in the U.S. Virgin Islands, and that's a sunrise. The sunrise is on us every day because God says so. The sun wakes us up every day, and it's a promise of a new day. Fulfill the promise of that day. Bring one more person to God. Amen? Amen. One more we won't have to worry about. If you're out there watching this on video, if you're out there sitting in the audience today and you're wondering what I'm talking about, or you're not sure about your relationship to God, we're about to say a prayer. And I want you to say this prayer with me. And I want you to mean it inside your heart. With every moral fiber of your being, I want you to mean this prayer when you say it. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, I am lost. I thank you for the things that you've done in my life. And I know that I've not always been a good person. I know that I've always been searching for something, searching for something. And as I sit here today, I wonder if that something is you, Father. So please, come into my heart and change my life. Father, I need a change. Father God in heaven, I need you. Amen. Simply say those words. Your life will change forever. Father Bob.
Well, uh, we've got the, our ushers going to be in the back back there if you have an offering, and we're going to close today in a word of prayer. And we thank you for coming. We know that it's uh, difficult sometimes to, to tolerate this uh, new reality of wearing our masks and all that stuff, but it's worth it. And so uh, we'll close with a word of prayer now. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that you are our Father. You have claimed us before we were ever even born. You claimed us before you... Before we knew life, you had made a sacrifice for us. It's a, a God-sized plan that only, only you could come up with, Father. You knew us before we were knit together in our mother's womb. And Lord, we honor you and we glorify you because you are worthy. We give you the thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So thank you for coming this week. Thank you for watching. If you want to subscribe to our YouTube channel, that would be a good thing for us. And we give you the thanks. And we will, uh, as we walk out, we'll sing a little song for you. It's our theme song these days, Keep on the Sunny Side. Mm -hmm.